Welcome to our Hilly Shop Makeup Break, where today we are reviewing Mockingjay Part 2, released in November 20, 2015. Realising the stakes are no longer just survival, Katniss Everdeen teams up with her closest friends, including Tina, Gail, and Fennec, for the ultimate mission. Together, they need District 13 to liberate the citizens of War Torn Panem and assassinate Princeton Snow, who's obsessed with destroying Katniss. What lies ahead are moral traps, dangerous enemies, and moral choices that will ultimately determine the future of millions. Okay, so that's a little quick synopsis for you guys. Now, if you haven't already seen this one, you don't want to be spoiled, I recommend you start watching now. Go check out some amazing videos on my channel, go watch the film. If you have seen it before, you can come back for it. But if you don't mind me with spoilers, then hang in for a sec, I'll go back to you shortly. Either way, it's you that must make that choice, and you guys are it now. Okay, so we're ready to start reviewing the film. A lot riding on this. <clears throat> now, I remember when I went to the cinema going to the airport, oh, you better not mock this up. Because for me, and we're going to talk about it in the review, there were some moments from the book that hadn't been featured in part one, and I was thinking, you've got to have them in this one, you've got to do it right. Okay, so, now, as I mentioned on the last show, the ending for me, just, just, just of part one, just was not right, because I talked about how in part one, you had the perfect cut-off point, except the problem was they didn't they didn't go with it because they wanted to put in mind people who hadn't seen the read read the books. But what that then meant is we then start the film kind of abruptly, you know. Hey, I kind of feel like you could easily put part one and part two together and do like a massive what would be you know four or five hour marathon, and you wouldn't tell the difference. You just wouldn't tell the difference. So for me. Mockingjay Part 2, every time I watch it, it always feels like it's starting abruptly. That's because of, you have to figure out where, how do we start the film. Because the perfect cut point didn't happen in Part 1. So you see Cat is recovering from the events of the first part. Whilst Prim goes to visit Peter, who you can tell straight away from the offset. What he's saying is body language everything. You see how deep he has succumbed to, to his hijacking. The conditioning that the ha ca capital put him through. Okay, right. So, District 2, now at the end of the film, we, uh, or part 1, sorry, I should say, we, le sorry, we learned that the, the rebellion had managed to liberate every district except for District 2. So district 2 was the last district remaining faithful to the capital. And so, President Lloyd he send, sends Katniss and the team to District 2, where they where Heather Squadron and they meet with Commander Lip, Lim, and it's here where the... the oh, I forget how early on they lay the foundations in for what ultimately going to happen with Gail, who you know I've been picking up a lot in the pop, the last two show, shows. I has read a lot of great work in Catching Fire and Part 1. And even though I had read the book, I know what Gail becomes. I know his mindset is just, ooh, it's just always so hard to watch. It's here where you start to see his mindset and how the whole rebellion has had an effect on, and the, the conflict has an effect on him, as he supposed for hers is the plan on how to deal with the capital's arsenal, and he, he starts to see the change in his character, which even obviously leads to him and Katniss start to actually actually they actually do cry about and respect morals. There's a lot of questioning of the morals in this book, which is good because it also it's not just the character, but also the, the, the viewers to try to question your morals too, particularly towards the end. Now, so the plan. So we do execute Girl's plan, and so the law is they are managed to escape the assault, and what even actually just puts the gun to Katniss, Katniss um, how much managed to sort of get through to them by another stellar moral and tells them how they're trapped in sort of like this endless cycle, you know, but that's being controlled by the capital, and it's always snow, always going to win, and it's going to go round and round and round. How about one lawyer does end up shooting her? And you have this brilliant scene in the cap in, in the capital where Snow and his friends are watching and all like that. And like, and they're like, a toast! And it's sort of serious there, because he's like, well, what are we toasting to tonight? Uh, and then uh, and actually ends up killing um, one of the members of the, in the, in the party. <laughs> it's a little scene where they basically get the Snow's now of like, yeah, he's now knows, okay, the end game's coming and we've got to be ready for it. Another boy of the capital ready for it. So, 
Back to Peter. So the try with Prim is not worked. Now Hamish actually goes and orders Katniss to go in. And I'm like, to see if she can maybe snap him out of the hijacking. Now, Katniss is very reluctant to do this. And I'm like, Hamish, did you not see the end of Mockingjay Part 1? Did you not see her nearly strangle her to death? I'm pretty sure Bugs had to knock him out unconscious. You know? I'm like, I'm so Katniss! If that was me, I'd be like, uh, no way am I going in there. It's like, nah, ah, 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 no, 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 no way am I going in there, okay? Not even if you had, if you had me, you know, bo body armoured with a suit, with an with electric wiring as a defence mechanism. Ah, ah, no, no, no way. I Way. I'm glad, glad Katniss feels the same too, but she's kind of doing those same no matter. She has to basically go in and, you know, try to talk about some memories of his childhood. And you can tell that despite her best efforts, he is still nowhere near to getting back to his old self. <laughs> so whilst Hamish might not have Katniss' safety in mind, dear old President Coyne does, because she doesn't want Katniss going anywhere near the capital. Instead, wants her to remain in just 13 to film more propos as the bones go on. Now, yeah, I get why Coyne wants that. You know, because obviously, when it kept the surrender, he wants to make sure Cat's alive, but he just could not see Cat is doing that. So it's not, so it's no surprise that she's able to successfully sneak her way onto the battlefield with the rest of her friends against the British army. <laughs> Who's really ticked off about that? <laughs> but before we do get to that though, um, we do get Faith and Honey um, married and we have one present the ceremony and reception that follows. And it's here at the reception that Katniss has to talk with Joanna where she explains how he will get to the capital um, so, uh, and join the troops. There's a, me there's a medical supplies being moved overnight and that's when obviously Katniss makes the move and obviously gets We'll see. So we have, she writes the front line. Commander Paler, who kind of really steps up to the plate, um, plate, um, reveals the capital is ready for the re rebels' arrival, and has created pods which are designed. Basically, they, they are designed to create similar monstrosities to what we've seen in the games. And um, Paler words it brilliantly with it, the idea to make sports of our death. Well done, Paler. Well, quite crazy there. Um, so, it's, so his castle was already prepared for the rebels' arrival, and even had, you know, part designed, ready for it. So they are, they basically are very, so basically it's similar to how the game's designed here, but this is obviously on a bigger scale because, actually, anybody and anybody could be caught in these parts, as we'll see later on. Now, Cassius is designed to be part of her squad, which is known as Four Five One. It's led by Boggs. Also features Gale. Finnick and the camera crew, so Castor, Polly, Cressida, and we also meet your members, so Jackson, who's kind of second in command, M Mitchell, and the Lee sisters. So the camera crew is also, as we mentioned, they're going to be filming every move. So Squad 451 moves out and then comes their first pod, which is taken out by Catlist, sorry, one of her arrows at it, and they're able to move on quite really. However, an unexpected surprise in store. And I remember reading, when I read the book, I was like, Oh. My. God. Because Peter comes and arrives. He's been assigned to Squad 451 by President Coin, despite the fact that Peter said he's still very much under his high, hijacking condition. And this leads to Boggs realising that President Coy isn't quite the person who she seems to have made herself out to be up to this point, whether you watch it through the film or by the read of the book. You, 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 it's like, whoa. And it's Coy is starting to see Katniss as a threat and is prepared to do anything to ensure that no one can challenge her, not even the Mockingjay. So you really are starting to see, okay, maybe we shouldn't really trust in President Coy at all. Maybe there's a completely different side to her that we don't you know, that we don't realise. 
But this stage, you just like, mm -hmm. it's, it's, you, don't, you don't really know who do you, who do you believe, because probably, we you know, Koi could have sent Peter out, his, out to the squad and being around the back of the, the, the conflict might remind you of who he once was and he'll snap out of it. That could be it. Or it could be what Boggs thinks and she's sent in there to do the kill if she thinks Catless is going to be considered as a threat. So there's a jeopardy now thrown in here because you know, ooh, Peter he could snap into his conditioning any second and it would all, all be dead. So, and of course, each the squad's wary of this, and each member is obviously takes turns watching, um, and even Catless gets one either. And, bit, and I'm like, and, we're all, and they're all thinking, what they're thinking, like, well, would you be able to shoot him? Shoot him if he goes goes high ramp, on the rampage. I don't know, I don't know if she would. But she does convince them to put on a road anyway. Um, and during the watch, they do try to have a one-on-one -on -one with each other where he's struggling to sort of tell what is and what is not real. Um, which must have been hijacked and all. So they come with the idea to tell what is and what isn't real. real why, what, why when he remembers something, someone tells him it's real. And so the quad kids move deeper into the capital and they uncover more parts now with the hollow and it gets mentioned very very early on not all the parts can be detected it'd be, it'd be too easy to do all that wouldn't it it'd be just be, just be too easy but not all the parts can be detected and unfortunately they do end up uncovering one of those on the parts they can detect which does end up fatally wounding bogs and in his dying moments he ends up trying to find the primary control of the hollow to cap this uh, and tells her not to trust them and to do what she came to do. I'm like, well, who's the them? That's it's really complicated, Bob. Well, it's quite funny though, because there's a little scene beforehand with Katniss and Gail together, and Katniss like, right, if we could get that hollow, we could get away from this lot and go on ourselves. And <laughs> so it's like she's already think so she's already thought if I could get the hollow myself, I could go off my own. And yet she's now got the hollow, but doesn't go off on her own. Um, because we have a power vacuum. <laughs> As one would expect. So if Bog's now gone, we do have a lot of a, sort of power vacuum issues. As Jackson, who was second command, as I mentioned earlier, tries to take control, tries to establish authority. Uh, Katniss comes up with a little backstory to try to explain the situation. And that is that President Coin gave me a special mission. Kill Snow. Yeah. We, <laughs> the audience, know that's not true. And I'm, I've got a sneak into the mission that even the whole squad are not convinced by that either. But, <laughs> question though, is able to help back it up. And then all the okay, well, of course, it's true, it's true, so that's all easy to teach. Well, for now at least. But like, but Ash saying that, and I'm thinking, even though I the you know that's not true, they're not convinced by it either. So it's like, oh, I don't know who she's trying to convince, but she's not doing a good job catching it, not. Oh, uh, dear. Yeah. Oh. So now, unfortunately, and this is where um, it starts to go a bit sort of a bit awry. Um, one of the leagues got um, greatly injured during that um, injured during the whole po the pod couple, and we were trying to get to shelter. So the two leagues are supposed to stay behind, um, and because the, the other refuses to refuse to leave as uh, the sister alone. Um, and the rest of the squad, they take shelter in a different location. However, their full hideout, it gets found by a group of peacekeepers who, just, who basically destroy it. So that kills the lead in the process. And this gets terrorised, making everyone believe the Mockingjay is dead. You even, you even have, it's like, a spe, it's like a special emergency broadcast, in transmission. And you've got C's living it. And oh my god, does his personality change? Where did that come from, Caesar? 
Because up to this point, I don't think I don't think we see Caesar in part one. Don't. Oh yeah, we do. No. Oh god. My memory. Sorry. Oh no. My memory. Sorry. We do. Yeah, we do. Because he starts eating a bit of pizza. Oh god. So much goes on the whole franchise. It's hard to remember what what you what is what was not. No, no, we do see Caesar. Sorry, I was trying to remember him if in part one, is he still the person he was in the Hong Kong Catching Fire, which was called this, you know, camp, funny, likeable guy. Um, but no, but in part, but in that tradition he does here in part two, his personality just changes. It's like, right, well, no, there's no doubt what side he's on. He's Team Capital. He knows where the bread's bored. It's like, whoa! I was not expecting that from Caesar. Now he's just like trying to defame Captain. It's like, whoa! Wow, that was ooh! That's a real, that's a real kick to the gut. Wow, Caesar! Wow. So late at night, we do get President Sir Jess in the hall pan end, and where he's trying to basically defame Captain. However, that his message gets hijacked. Uh, thanks to BT over this 13 and President Coin addresses herself to Panem <laughs> and does the exact opposite and does like a sort of beauty. It even appears that she's showing some form of emotion. You even see her do a quick little look. Well, I did like, I just, she was, you know, I thought. Did you even see her, the voice breaking? I'm thinking. Okay, is she tried to, is she put it on for show or is she just generally mean it? Because at this point, I'm still no the wiser what I'm supposed to make a president coin. So, yeah, where, uh, it's a brilliant well done there. If that was just for show, well done, lady. Well done. She's a brilliant actress, but, So. Katniss decides they should now head for President Stone's mansion. Um, um, and with the streets, how oh, sorry, how are the streets uh, literally with parts, I should say. Um, Cassie decides they go underground. However, Snow discovers that they are alive. Of course, he's going to discover it. Really funny because um, one of his um, close aides comes in, just wakes him up, I, up. It's like, and spit because it's like, oh, should I get a doctor? And so it's like, I hope you're not disturbing me because of my help. It's like, no, no, they're alive. It's not what happened. And so I was like, oh, let me see, let me see. I need to see. And it's like he's found them. That's a little, that's a little exhaust comical. No, it's not supposed to be comical. So Snow knows that they're not alive, and he knows exactly where to find them. And so sends in these sort of reptilian mutts to go after them. Oh my god. It's here where we sadly lose Finnick. Oh no, it's, it's quite brutal. It, it's a lot more brutal in the book, trust me. If you read the book, you know it's, it's a lot more gory, it's a lot more brutal. Finnick's death, it really is gruesome. Um, he does try to fend them off. Um, you also, we also lose Castor and Jax as well. Uh, well, which is, which is also gruesome as well. Uh, and for the few survivors, they actually managed to make their way up to the surface. And it's left to Crest to sort of take, lead, still to take them uh, to a place of safety. It's for old friend Tigress, who's able to hide the squad in her safe, in a safe house. And whilst inside, Cat is built to the main remainder of the squad. That that cover story was one big fat lie. <laughs> really? Really? Was that all it took? Was that all it took for poor Phoenix to get Peter and be like, oh, it's all a big fat lie. I made it up. Because he's now feeling responsible for the death of those of the court, some of those squad members. As she shot Mary Caster and Phoenix. How uh, Cressler tells her that they all knew, we all knew, girl, girl, we all knew it. 
No, sister, we all knew you would make it up. No, we all knew that. We knew you were lying. How they basically just chose to carry on <laughs> because um, they believe in her and the cat is in the palace. So, all right, now we're getting to the big stuff. So, daylight arises. Snow announces a mandatory evacuation where all refugees should head to the mansion. And they even deactivate the pods so that refugees can sort of make their way to the mansion. Um, so the squad decides to use this to make their move. And Tiger decides both Katniss and Gale's refugees and they head out onto the streets where oh, you see all these other refugees. It's like, it's almost like you see a completely different side to the capital. It, so they why it's been built up um, in the, the franchise so far. It, it, right? So it's not as all 1990s as we expect to believe. Um, believe. Now, unfortunately, though, their cover does get very neat. It's, it's, it's sort of knee blow. The rebels arrive. They were on the scene, and that's literally it's all guns blazing. It's all hell gets loose. It's loose. And in you see in chaos, and oh my god, girl gets captured by the, by peacekeepers. And this scene does exactly what the book does because I remember when I read the book for the first time, I thought, oh my god, that's it, girl's now dead. You've killed Gail. No, that's generally what I thought. I gen when I read the book, oh, honestly, right. When I read the book for the very first time, I generally thought, Oh my god, we've just, they've, they've killed Gail. Please get, can he get taken away by, by the peacekeeper, he's being dragged by the keeper, so you shout to Katniss, SHOOT ME, SHOOT ME! Because he, he knows what's going to come next. Next. Um, because he's thinking if he can't capture, they're going to try and torture him. So he's like, Katniss, like, just SHOOT ME KATNESS, SHOOT ME! So he can a quick pay his death and not have to face torture. I'm, you do think, oh my god, it's is girl now down and out for the count? Because it's a good while before he makes his final appearance in the franchise, both in the book and the film. But you gem but generally, when I read it, I was thinking, oh my god, have we just, have we just killed Gail? Oh, we better not. We better not. But, oh my god. So, really, the scene's able to do it exactly how the book does it. Make you actually think, oh my god. That's it. That's the, that, oh, that, that. That's the last I see again. Oh, he's now dead. Oh my god. It's about to get worse. Oh my god. The amount of, the amount, you just can't. The amount of, you know, shocks and turns you're getting and all this. There's too much to handle. Cause it's about to be even worse because Katniss reaches the mansion. She spots that peacekeepers are rounding up children. As kind of like a human shield. And you're thinking, what? No. Really? Really? Are the capital really going to stoop that low? They're going to take children and just line around the gates? No. And then, as it's going on, you see the distance, a hovercraft arriving being with the capital seal on it. Um, it sends down these parachutes. Now, upon landing, and oh my god, it's actually horrific, it triggers an explosion. So, upon this, the green mates arrive, including, wait for it, Prim! It's an utter shock, you're thinking, no. When you, when you read it in the book first, I think, no, 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 not Gail and Prim, no. Um, another way that a second wave arrives and that wipes out Prim and he's is injured. I don't know. When the space of two scenes, you are left wondering, oh my God, have I just witnessed a death? of two main characters in the franchise. 
Well, at least one of them, yes. Um, so I'll try and leave you guessing just for a little bit longer. <laughs> Which one it is? <laughs> so eventually, uh, let's all we see uh, Catalyst. It's back in District 13. <sighs> Having to um, recover from all the injuries and learns that Prim is indeed dead and the capital has been taken by the rebels and President Snow has been captured and is of course waiting um, execution. Then later on we get Effie um, who fire comes on the scene. She's brought Katniss some of her things and later on and later on Katniss even pays Snow one final visit in his garden. And this scene is absolutely dynamite because it's here where we actually get the horrible truth that Coin was ma masterminded the whole thing. She's the fight behind everything that happened, playing both of them for fools. And I love Snow's dialogue there. Because even he admits, you know, we were too... Too busy, you know, trying to wipe the other one out. We didn't realise the master plan going on. Brilliant. And why do you know how straight away he immediately, you know, admits, you know, I'm above killing children. I know I just tried to bed. Okay, yeah, the bombings, yeah, that was not me. That was you lot. That that was you lot, okay? I, I'm, a, okay, you know, all right. I'm not just going to purposely just kill children for no good reason. What a waste that is! Oh, well, at least Snow has some decency when it comes with murderings. <laughs> but it's such a brilliant scene. And, you, and, and I remember when I read the book for the first time, and I read it and I thought, I don't believe you. I, so, sorry, no, sorry. I don't believe you. Because... My head was, well, my head was doing a lot of things. It was still trying to wrap around the fact that we've lost Prim. It was still 50-50 trying to work out how we just lost Gale. And now you're trying to tell me, well, actually, Coyne actually is the one who was part of the Lord. Like, nah. Nah. I don't believe you. I just don't believe you. And it isn't until the execution scene, which we're about to get to, it isn't until then where I actually believe him. And Kaz's arrow is going to tell the truth. That was when I was like, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, I believe him now. Right. Speaking of my dear, my dear Gail. Thankfully, he's alive! Panic over there! Oh, phew, panic over, he's alive. But, um, it's about to get a bit. Because he pays Gut to Cat this one for a visit. Oh, and it is so gut wrenching to watch. It was so heartbreaking to read. Um, because basically, she has to basically ask him if what the rebels did was part of his idea oh, and i just my heart breaks for gail because he's because you can see him welling up with emotions he's trying to apologize for you know they to protect her and her family but Kat, she's just being cold um oh and i just like oh no poor gail my heart was bleed for him. Um, and sadly, the two depart. It's like the friendship's gone. It's, like, it's just sort of gone. I mean, the whole event of the franchise kind of has put a real strain on their relationship. Um, and what's interesting is, the, the, the film adapt adaptation, uh, the way they did it, um, it was kind of more final in comparison to the novel. 
Because in the novel, she's just quite, Katniss Cork just quietly thinks on Gale's actions and ponders about whether or not it was his actions that brought harm to Prim. Though part of her sort of wants to deny it. She feels she will be unable to ever disassociate that from Gale and thus lets him go without word. Um, can she just wondering in her head if she and Gale might have always grown apart anyways, even without the capital and the games the steel force pain that is departing. But in the film, Kelly speaks with much more finality, dry and and straight coal. It really does dry poor Gale's head. And my heart bleeds for him. It really does. As he's apologising before she says to him goodbye forever. So, oh, it's so hard to watch. Especially as the last, the previous two plots have done a lot of good with Gal, they've made him a great character, and maybe loved him so much. It's so hard to watch. Now, another scene that could be quite hard to watch, and I wanted this in the adaptation. Because when I read the book for the first time, I absolutely loved what comes next. Because this even gets me thinking, okay, if I was them, what would I, what way would I vote? If I had to do it, what way would I vote? And even now, I still wonder what way would I vote it? Um, vote it. So, President Coy, she calls a meeting with the remaining victors that are left alive, which now only stands at seven. Um, I'm going to look very quickly up, because I want to know, before the quarter quell, how many um, were still left alive? Let's look that up um, real quickly. Uh, okay. So, as we know, there have been 75 victors throughout the history of the Hunger Games. Games. So, before the third quarter quell, 59 of them were still alive. So, that is a massive culling to go from 59 down to just 7. So, by the end of Mockingjay, only 7 are still alive. You have, obviously, Katniss, Peter and Hamish. BT, Johanna, Annie, and Abara, who really hasn't done, done much since the events of the quarter quell. So Coy proposes one final Hunger Games. Yeah. Oh yeah. And like, right, this now should be the point where your cog the cog should start telling you. Hang on, should we really be doing this? Is this... Coin? Doesn't that not make it better than us? Coin? Coin? Hmm? 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 Uh, except that this time it would feature uh, children being reaped from the capital. And... Johanna even points out in the book, in the book, Johanna points out Snow's got a, grand, got a granddaughter. And I would have loved it if the films did not put her in. Because in Catching Fire, I think they put her in. And I'm thinking, no! Because you're not going to have the impact of that, of this scene. You're not going to have the full impact of it if you haven't read the book. But it's still quite impacting, but yeah. So, yeah, that's just, it's just a lot of it. So, yeah, so it would feature children from the capital. So, capital. And so, Coin basically says, each victor must vote. No one will, e no one will ever know. Okay, no one will ever know. It will just be... And th there are no abstentions. No one can abstain. So, by a vote of 4-3, it is in favour of... Of the games. So these were the boats. So, Enabora and Johanna were like basically say yes because they basically won the capital to get a taste of its own medicine. 
BT, Annie and Peter all vote no, because they feel if we do this, that's us being no better than them. So that just leaves Katniss and Hamish. And Katniss's vote is very, very tactical. Because given what Fox said earlier about how Coy will do anything to stop people she sees as a threat, Katniss goes, yes, with a vote. To show Coy, I side with you. you. And then Hamish, he breaks the tie and cast the deciding vote by siding with the Mockingjay. And so the idea was that Coy was going to announce the proclamation after the execution took place. How we don't ever get to that, because we get to Snow's execution, it takes place, and um, we have President Coy delivering a speech before proceedings um, commence. However, instead of Katniss firing her arrow at Snow, she fires it at Coy, as she now realises everything Snow has been saying in the gardens was true, and that she would become exactly like Snow. Probably ten times worse. Probably ten times worse. So you think Snow is bad, Coy probably is going to be ten times worse. Now, in the chaos, um, Katniss gets taken away as the massive descent on Snow. And you don't really know how if Snow's actually probably gone. Uh, whether he's dead through all the copying up of blood he's doing, or through all the many potions he has to take over the years, or for the mass days, you don't know, but you assume he is now dead. So by the execution, she gets get taken away, she's visited by Hamish, he tells her that uh, she will receive pardon, but as Commander Paler, uh, looks set to get elected as a new president of a united Pan Am um, for uh, the f uh, for what, what would be for the first time quite a long while actually Pan Am being united and has been and the given translation to go home as both she and Hamish say their goodbyes to Effie. Okay. Right. Now we get quite an uh, emotional scene because it's time to cat scene. Now, when I, I'll admit now, when I was in the cinema and I watched this, some people actually did laugh at this. No, they did. Some people actually were laughing at this scene. And I'm like, it's not supposed to be funny because cat this is literally trying to kill the cat. Because Katniss, she comes back home to District Trial, she heads home, she buys the place empty, deserted, except for the cat. You see the cat is right there, and Katniss, she's full green, she just literally just screams, she just, get out. She's like, get out! She's like, Prim's gone, she's, she's not, just trying, and literally, she's, she literally, it goes to us for rage, and she's just trying to throw things at the cat, trying to hit it, and Kind of just put the rage there, it's like, oh my god, this is so powerful. However, I can hear some laughter. In the scene's laughing, I'm thinking, this is not supposed to be funny. Because she is trying to kill the cat. Now, she doesn't kill the cat, okay? For all you animal lovers out there, the cat does not get killed. But, oh boy, this cat is going to do a bloody good go at it. But I'm like, but I then watch this movie and then hear it around some laughs. I was thinking, this is not supposed to be funny. It's not supposed to be a funny scene. Oh dear. Ugh. So the next one you see her reunite with Peter and we discover that Gail has moved on. He now has eyes in District 2 to where he has my, my sister to kill himself a fantasy job. And the film ends a couple of years in the future. Where Kat and Peter, they've settled in together, that settled down, sorry to say, together, and they've now got their own kiddies of their own. Oh, that's gonna be fun. <laughs> oh, and it ends there. Right, so that leads us to do the standouts. So, I'm gonna do stand up moment first, because I think it's quite obvious. For me, my stand up moment is the, 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 uh, the boat that coin calls. For the victors, that is such a powerful scene. It's, wow, it is a that is a real test of morals. And 
What I love about the is it doesn't just get the bitches thinking about it, the cats thinking about it, it also gets, gets the beer thinking about it. And I still, to this day, am not sure where I would side. Knowing that Koi would demand, an, would, would demand an answer from me, and we'd have to sit here until I'd say yes or no. Be a bit like on Big Brother, where I'm trying to cast my vote to a bit for somebody. But I'm worried because I like both nominees. You, you know you've got to get an answer. Um, and either Arissa or Julie will try and force it out on me. But I'm like, mm. that's why I feel here. I just still, I even to this day still wonder. If I was in a big position, how would I vote? How would I vote? Because I can see both sides to it. While at the same time, it would make us no better than them. At the same time, I also do feel they, the capital, needs to understand how the country had felt having to constantly send its citizens to these games year in, year out for 75 years. It just, yeah, so I still to this day do not know if I had to get asked that question and I had to, I had to pass it in that boat. I honestly don't know where my, where my boat would lie. I honestly do not know. So that's my stand Right, Sarah character. Now, for the last two shows, it has been Gail. But unfortunately, he's not going to get the hat trick. Because I just felt, this is President Snow at his best. Snow says his best performance for last. So for me, I'm just going to give it to President Snow. I'm going to give it to him, because for me what does in the end is the, is the scene in the gardens where he's talking for it himself for it, he's playing for himself and I'm thinking, yeah, but I don't, don't believe you, I don't, I know you're saying it's, it's probably the truth, but I'm not convinced it is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, I just still don't believe you, and it isn't until the execution happens where I go, yep, Okay, yep, he was right, I believe you. But yeah, but Beast Snow, as amazing as he is about the whole franchise, I think he saves his best performance for last. So for me, I'm going to give President Snow that character. Well, that's all for the same, folks. Thank you so much for watching. If you've loved it, do click the like button. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel yet, because I remember you click the subscribe button. And then that way, once you are subscribed, you will never miss a single moment when you call the colors on the channel, including the bright colors of Mecca Brew. And until next time, awesome. Please say, TTFN, stop for now.